Okay, hello everyone. So in this video, we will be assembling the Newgate clock. Now, this is gonna be quite a long video. Um, it's a bit tedious and mistakes will happen as I'm doing this video. So you may just bear with me because I'm, I'm bound to make a small mistake as we go along and I might have to undo and retry again. But we should have no problem with this, hopefully from beginning to end. So take your time, get the clock assembled. There's a small bit of work at the end of the assembly then, which comes with cutaways and exploded views. And once you have that all done, we're ready to do the drawings. So, okay, we're going to go into SolidWorks, we're going to go to File, we're going to go to New, we're going to go to Assembly, and we're going to click OK. Now again, just to reiterate, there's no point in doing any of this video unless you have every single part of the new gate clock made from the videos. Uh, this is going to appear, so it's going to click the X in this. Uh, I might untick these as well. It might help maybe just with things popping up on the screen. So this is what your assembly looks like. We go to browse. And what we're looking for is the new gate main body that we have edited and all that with the pins. So I just need to find that. Here it is. Open. This is the main part to drop in first. Once you have that in, just click anywhere to drop it. It's stuck, it's gone off my mouse now. When you know it's when you bring it in first, it'll be stuck to your mouse. Once you click then it'll drop. I then go to insert components, uh, click the X in this. Is this gonna keep popping up, which can be annoying, but we'll be okay. So I'm gonna to go to browse, and what I'm going to look for is the bell. So I'm just gonna find the bell. And let me see. There we go bring it in, it's going to be stuck to my mouse, click to drop it anywhere I like. Now, we go to the paper clip, we go to mate, I'm going to click this outside of this pin anywhere I like, and I'm going to click this little skinny edge in here, not the edge now, the face in here anywhere I like, and you'll see that it'll slide into position, click the green tick, catch it now and kind of drag it down that there's a small bit of the pin sticking out. Then, click this flat face, click this edge, we don't want it like that, we want a distance. So I'm actually gonna click undo, and we're gonna try again. Click this edge instead of face, click this edge. And we want it to be, that's still not correct. Okay, so we're gonna click undo again. So we're gonna try a different option. I'm gonna click this face here, and I'm gonna click this little skinny face here, and I'm gonna click distance, now it's working. And the distance is very particular for the clock. It has to be 16. And once you have that done, we click the green tick and then we click again. That's one of the bells in place. I go back to insert component. I go back to browse and we bring in the second bell. So you're just bringing the same part again. So you just go get bell again, open, drop it here anywhere you like. We go to the paper clip, click this surface anywhere I want. Click this surface in here anywhere I want. Click the green tick. Drag it down until it's kind of in the right place. Click this face here. Spin it around with the roller on your mouse. You push down the roller and it's like a button. And then when you move your mouse, it'll spin around. Click this face here. Click distance. Delete out whatever number is there. Type in 16. And click the green tick twice. Now, so that's that into place. Okay, so the next thing to bring in then is actually the handle that goes up on top. So I go to insert component, I go to browse, and we're looking for the handle. There we go, part four. Drop this anywhere you want. Now, this can be a bit tricky to mate. So, to get this into the correct place, the best way is to click mate. Um, this little arrow here, click that, and then pick up front plane. Then, the little arrow beside the very top arrow, let's drag that away, the very top arrow, we're gonna click front plane no, sorry, not from plane. We're going to scroll down. We're going to click plane one. That'll slide that into the right place. Click the green tick. 
Then the next thing, we'll just click that little arrow again, click that little arrow again, and then we're ready to start again. Click this little arrow now, pick up right plane, then click the little arrow up here again, click right plane, that'll slide it into the correct position, click the green tick. And then the next job to do, which can be the most difficult, click this face here anywhere you like, click this edge here, click the option tangent, click the green tick. Now, so let's put the handle into the correct place, click the green tick, so that's the handle put on. Next thing now is to put on the two bolts that go here and here. So that can be the most difficult part to get into place on the clock. You might need to go back and watch that video a few times, especially trying to find plane one. That can be tricky to find for the assembly. Go to insert components once you have that. Again, go to browse. And what we're looking for now are the bolts. So here they are, new gate clock bolt, click open. There's one, drop it in where we like. I go to mate. Zoom in here, I want this edge to mate with this face, that's that done. And then I want this circle, so click that edge, to be concentric with this circle, which I automatically will do, we click the green tick. And we're going to repeat the process now for the other side. Now, do you see these little pieces here that are sticking out past it? That little bit there, that'll be fixed up in a few minutes. So don't panic about things like that just for a moment. I wouldn't know um, in the making exactly where that finishes until now, and we can fix them things later. Okay, so we go to insert component. Again, I go to browse, and again, I'm looking for the bolt. Same bolt, bring it in, drop whatever I want. Go to the paper clip. Spin around, we're going to click this edge here. Spin around and see underneath, click this flat face here. Click the green tick. And again, click this edge on this. Click this circle here, it'll slide into place. Click the green tick. Click it again. That's them into place. Now, the next thing to bring in is the hammer. So we go to insert components. We go to browse and we're going to bring in the hammer for the bell. So hammer, here it is, click open. We drop that anywhere we like. Again, go to the paper clip, spin this around, click this little face here. Now, we want this face in here, the front flat face of this hole, click that. So that's span the hammer into the correct position, we click the green tick. I'm going to now drag the hammer across that it's more or less in the right place, like so. So we have to get ahead that it's um, not down too low because when you drag it, it might end up being down too low or it might end up being way too high. So this is kind of position it by eye into the right place for the moment. And again, this can be tricky. We want to pick up that point there at the front. So you pick up a dot there if you move your mouse over to it. And you want to pick up this flat face here on top. Now it's automatically going to do that, which is wrong. We go to distance, and the distance this needs to be is 20. Click the green tick. And then the last job to do is we have to get it that it's not moving left and right over and over. So it wants to slide like this now, you know, as if it was actually hitting the hammers, which we don't want it to do. So I'm going to click this surface here. I'm going to click this uh, curvy surface here on top. Okay, wrong one, click this flat surface here then instead. It'll slide over, tangent's correct, click the green tick. And then you can now straighten it up if you want, by eye, as best you can. There we go. Or you can leave it at an angle, it doesn't really matter. And we're just gonna stop it rocking now and stop it moving by clicking this face here anywhere I like, clicking this part of the clock anywhere I like, and then click the padlock symbol. Then click the green tick. And that will stop it moving and hold into place. Now I know it moves in the real situation, but we don't want that to keep moving and having to constantly be rebuilding our solid works. That can be quite hard on the PC and things can go missing. So we'll, we'll have it that it can't move. Click the green tick. 
Now, uh, there's a warning message after appearing here. I'm just going to scroll down and see what the problem is. If this doesn't happen on your PC, don't worry about it. So I'm just going to click the first option here, right click, right click the first option, click delete, click yes. Okay, that didn't fix it, so I just need to try again. We're going to try the last option here, right click, click delete, the second last option, sorry, click yes. Still not fixed, okay. So this is why I was talking about in the video, these things happen. So we'll delete the lock and we'll delete the distance and we'll have to start again, unfortunately. Okay, so we're back to square one. So we're gonna go back to mate. We're gonna click this face here, we're gonna click this here and we're gonna click padlock. And we're gonna click the green tick and click again. We're gonna check and see will it move? No, perfect. So that will happen on SolidWorks. You're going to have them things where, you know, it's going to break or something's going to be overdone and you'll have to delete it out and try again. And it might not, the next person, it might not happen at all. It could actually be absolutely fine. So hopefully everything will be okay with that. If you're having trouble, go back over the video again until you get that piece in. Now, next thing I'm going to bring in is the legs. So I'm going to go to insert component. I'm going to go to browse. And we're going to bring in the legs of the new gate clock. Now, I'm trying to find that. Here we are. Clock leg. Click open. There it is there. Now we go to meet. We're going to click that surface there. We're going to click this surface here. It's going to spin around to position. Click the green tick. I'm then going to click this top edge here. I'm going to click this top edge on the leg. Sorry, this top face on the leg. Okay, none of them are working, so we're going to have to try something different. Click the undo button. We'll drag it up into position then, get closer to it. And we'll try one more time. So we're going to click this circle here. We're going to click this circle here. There we go. And we'll click the green tick. So that's that leg into place. Click the green tick again, go back to mate, or sorry, not mate, my mistake, go back to insert component, and we're going to bring back in the leg again for the other side. Mate, again, we click this surface here, we click that surface there, that spins in the correct way around. Then I click this edge here, click this edge here, and it didn't work, so we'll have to click the undo button. What we'll do is we'll drag it up more or less closer to it. Sometimes that's all it needs is to be brought a bit closer. Try again. We click this edge here. Click this face here. No. Click this edge here. Yes. Click the green tick. So sometimes you have to drag it closer to it so that sort of works knows what it is you're trying to do. And then it'll put it onto it. If it's too far away, it won't move it. And we'll click the green tick. Okay, so that's them put on in perfect position. Now, the next thing to bring in then is the clock face. So I go to insert components, I go to browse, and we're going to bring in the clock face. So that's the one with all the numbers on it. Clock face, let me see. face. Click open. There it is there. Now this is naturally the wrong way around and we're going to fix that now once we get into position. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to click mate. We're going to click this edge here. I'm going to spin around to the inside of the clock and I'm going to click this edge here. That will position it now that it's inside the clock. Now what I need to do now is I need to catch the number 12 essentially and I need to spin this around until 12 is straight up. So you just adjust that by eye, but there is a faster way. If I click the, let me see, if I click that same point here, sometimes this works now, and I click this point here on the one, and I click the padlock, that will hold in the right place. Click the green tick. Click it again, be sure. It should tick. Okay, it's not working, so 
that's an example where I said it should work and it didn't. So what we'll try is a little bit different then. We're going to go to mate again. And I'm going to zoom in here on this little flat surface on the two. I'm going to click that. Zoom back. I'm going to click this little arrow here. And I'm going to look for top plane. I'm going to click top plane. It'll adjust like that, just let it do its thing. Uh, make sure parallel is the option. When that's done, click the green tick, click it again. So that should hold the face in place. Yep, now it won't move, and 12 is exactly in the middle where you want it. Now we're going to bring in the hands. So I'm going to insert components, I'm going to go to browse, and we're going to bring in the hour hand first. There we go, open. Drop that wherever we want. I go to mate, click that circle, click this circle, there we go. And to stop it or to get it exactly in place then, just click that flat face there, click this back edge here, it'll slide on. Um, I don't mind what time it points to, I'll let you decide that yourself, you'll see that you can spin this around. So I'd leave it that you can move it, um, wherever you want to put it, that's fine by me. Click the green tick again. Go insert components, and now we're going to bring in the hour hand. Or sorry, the minute hand. Again, drop this wherever I want. Go to mate. Click that circle there. This circle here, that'll put it into the right place. Click the green tick. And then again, we click this edge here, that face there. Click the green tick, click it again. Okay, we don't need to do that, so click undo. All you have to do then, it's already worked out for you, is just, again, click that circle, click that circle, click the green tick. There's no need to do anything else. And you can position that wherever you want as well. Done. And then finally, we bring in the second hand. So insert component. And we are looking for the second hand. There we go. Now, so the second hand has came in backwards, unfortunately. So I'm going to go to mesh. I'm going to click this flat face here. And I'm going to click this flat face here. And I'm going to click the two arrows that are here to flip alignment. That'll put it the right way around. And I click the green tick. And then I just click this circle here. Click that circle there. That pops it in like so. And that's that put into place. So that's all the hands on the clock. When that's done, we're okay, we have it all in position. All that's left to do now is to bring in the inside part. So I go to insert component and I'm looking for the inside. So let me see, we've clock face, new get no. Here we go. Open, drop that there. I go to mate. I click this little flat face here. I click the back of the face there. It's the wrong way around, so I click the two little arrows here, flip a moment, there we go. Click the green tick. Click this edge here anywhere I like. Click this edge here anywhere I want. Click concentric. That'll put it into position in the middle. And then finally then, if I click this flat face here, and then if I click the little arrow here beside everything, and I click top plane, It'll spin around after a moment, make sure parallel is on. Click the green tick, click the green tick. And that is that done. Now, there are a few things missing here on the back that I didn't make videos about because the amount of parts that we have here is immense. And I'm quite conscious of the fact that the parts are getting very, very long here. And um, if you want to make the dials here for the back and the switch in your own time, you can and I can help you in class to pop them into place. But really, I don't think there's much need for them since we have such an immense amount of parts gone in here already. Okay, so that's the new gate clock done. Now, we need to save this correctly. 
So just going to minimize here for the moment, just not X out of it now, just minimize. And wherever I want on the desktop, I'm going to right click and I'm going to go to new. I'm going to go to folder. I'm going to call this part A. Now, the reason why I can't create is because I've already got a folder called part A. So I'm going to call it, you call it part A, I'm going to call it part A1. But you call it part A. We go back into SOLIDWORKS and I'm going to go to SOLIDWORKS, I'm going to go to File, I'm going to scroll down to Pack and Go. Make sure everything is ticked. We're going to Browse and we're going to find that Part A folder that you just made. Click Select Folder, click Save. Click OK to everything. That's that done. Then click the Save button. It's going to ask you what you want to call this. Call this assembly one of new gate clock. And again, we're going to find that same folder, the folder you call part A on the desktop. Now, that's a very important step. Make sure you follow it. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to apply color to this. Now I'm not going to do this for every single part because the video would get too long. I'm just going to apply it to the main parts and I'm sure you can work out yourself then how to apply the correct colors. So for example, the uh, handle on top and the two legs underneath are stainless steel. So the way we do this is you're in the assembly, just like this. I'm going to right click that. I'm going to click open part. Give it a moment and the part will eventually open on SOLIDWORKS. If it doesn't, it's after appearing at the bottom, you need to bring it up. It says on the left-hand side here, material not specified. So I right-click that and I go to edit material. And in the steel option, we're looking for um, bright stainless steel. All right, there we go. So we have annealed, we have 316. That's the one I want, the top one, 316. Click Apply, click Close. Click the Save button. Click X, this X. Click Yes. And it will have updated inside. You can apply the same stainless steel to the hammer, to the bolts, to the legs as well. Now, to the body. So I'm gonna right click. I'm gonna click Open Part. It's made from a painted steel. So we're going to, material not specify, we're going to right click, we're going to edit material. And this one is not stainless, okay? It is steel hot roll coal, this one here. It's not too important which one you pick. You can pick any of these numbers here. Click apply, click close. I then right click this option here. I click the beach ball. I click this here. And this is white. So I'm going to choose white. Now it won't make much of a difference on your screen, but we click white, we click the green tick. Okay, again, I click save and I can X out that here. Click yes, and you'll see that's updated on this particular part. Uh, the actual clock body, the inside part, again, that's made from black. So you can make it from black and the face and all that's the same. But that's all that's involved in that step by step. So the color I've used there is the same for the bells. And after that, then you should get it right. The face is white. So again, you can do the same thing. So if I go right click, open part. Material not specified, right click, edit material. That is a white plastic. So I'm gonna scroll down here to plastic. We're gonna pick ABS. We're gonna click apply. We're gonna click close. And it's already a white plastic. Now, if you wanted numbers to stand out, okay? If you want them to be black, we'll say, that is, let me see, it's not this, it's this one. I'm just trying to find which one it is. Now I just need to click rebuild here for a second. So we're gonna go here to the appearance, to this. And I'm just gonna click black and I'm gonna click yes. And again, I'm gonna click the save button and I'm gonna click X. I'm going to click yes, and that will have updated on this. Now, where's it gone? Okay, that's just because I have so many files open on my laptop.
that you might think is sort of disappearing, but it will reappear again once I close it. Once you have all that done, click the save button again. Okay, and you can X out of the assembly. Now, I'm going back into that same assembly again. So I'm going file, assembly, new get clock. I'm going to open it up. Click rebuild. If it asks you to rebuild, click rebuild. Now, what I want to do next, once you have all that done, all the color is applied to it, is I want to get ready for doing the drawing file. So I'm just going to go here to the configuration manager. I'm going to click default once. I'm going to call control C, click anywhere, control V. And I'm going to double click copy of default to turn it on. And I'm going to slowly double click it to change its name to exploded. Make sure exploded is now turned on. So default should be light colored, exploded should be heavy colored. I go to assembly, I go to exploded view. And I'm going to take this apart. So I'm going to click that, I'm going to drag up, I'm going to click the clock once, I'm going to click the clock again. I'm going to take that, I'm going to drag it maybe this way, I'm going to click the clock once, I'm going to click the clock underneath again. Take the hammer, I'm going to pull that up. Now I know people are going to be asking me, how far do you do this? How much? How little? It's up to you. There is no set measurements on how you do your exploded view. Click the clock once, click the clock again. You decide what you want to go with. Click the clock once, click the clock again. There is no set pattern to this. So don't be panicking about, oh, mine doesn't look like this videos. That's not the requirement. The requirement is that you're able to do an exploded view. So that's going to do me from my exploded view. I'm happy with that. Okay, I've took all the parts off. It's good enough for me. I click the green tick. Now, if you double click default, it'll all go back together again. When you double click exploded view, nothing will happen until you click the arrow beside it and you double click what you just did. Then it breaks up again. So again, we're going back into default. Click default, go control C, click anywhere you like, go control V. And I want you to slowly double click that and I want to change it to cut away. Double click cut away to turn it on. Go back here to the yellow and blue, go to the front plane, go to sketch, hit the space bar, click normal two. And we're going to sketch any shape you like. Most times I use a circle. Just gonna draw a circle. No, unfortunately I've drawn two circles, it's gonna do. So I'm going to just draw a circle to one side, something like this. Again, don't be wondering what size it is. Don't be asking what size it is. It's totally random. Once a circle crosses over the clock like this. Then go to search commands, go to cut. So type in the word cut, cut will appear. Click that. Change from blind to true wall and change the direction that it's cutting through and click the green tick. And don't worry about any of the warning messages here, that's okay. This allows us to see the inside of the clock for our drawings. Go back to configuration manager, double click default to turn it back on and the cut will disappear. When you have that done, click save. Finally, I said I would, so I'm gonna show you now. I want to edit this that these pieces aren't sticking out like this. So I'm just gonna right click this and I'm going to go to edit part. I'm gonna right click anywhere like here. I'm gonna to go to sketch. Hit the space bar, click normal too. Now you need to zoom in. Now we're gonna to go to sketch. I'm gonna draw a circle. Don't worry about where it is, more or less in the middle and make sure it's bigger, right on out. I'm gonna smart dimension that that circle is a total of five. I'm gonna go features, extruded cut, I'm going to spin this around that I can see what's happening in 3D. Now that's too far. So I'm going to change that from five, that from 10 down to five. So that's what you want. And I click the green tick. When you have that done, click this button here to exit. And you'll see now that that's fixed on that side. You need to repeat the process to fix it on this side. Click save. Once you have that done, click save all. Okay, 
Now, if you're having any trouble when it comes to putting the color on the clock, there is another way of putting color onto it, okay? You can literally in the assembly, go right click, click the beach ball, which is this one here, the first beach ball, click the first option. You can drag over this thing here on the left hand side, sometimes it pops up. You can click the likes of Chrome, this one, click the green tick, click save. And you can do it like that all the way through if the color is giving you trouble on your computer and you can get it all done in the assembly. Make sure you click save every time. Okay, that's the end of that video. Best of luck getting the assembly done. Thanks very much.